Hello, I'm Michael Crane. I'm a principal engineer at Hermes, uh, responsible for the My Hermes application, uh, which is um, an online application to send parcels. Um, I'm working here in Leeds. One of the things I'd like to talk to you about today, well, the principal thing I want to talk to you about today, is uh, test-driven development. Uh, it's something that I'm very keen uh, to uh, promote in um, the teams that I'm uh, responsible for, uh, and I'd like to share some of that uh, enthusiasm with you today. Um, so what is test-driven development? Test-driven development is it's not new. Um, it begins um, in the uh, era of mainframes, and when programmers were punching their, uh, their programs onto cards, and they had uh, little time um, with the machine to, um, to execute those programs, they would write um, the expected result of those programs down and then compare them when they had the opportunity with the results from, the, uh, from running it with the computer. Um, this was then uh, updated um, by uh, Kent Beck uh, in his um, extreme programming model. Um, and in this, uh, what would happen is that you found with the uh, advent of uh, new technologies, the feedback loop was a lot quicker. Um, and also, it was automated as well. Uh, so with, a, with test room development, uh, you would write a test that described the discrete piece of functionality. Um, the test would fail. You would then write the code for the uh, to make that test pass. And then you would refactor the test. Uh, sorry, you refactor the code to um, make it better structured and to make it easily, um, easy to read. Um, so, so with that, um, it's probably um, worth pointing out that test-driven development is not uh, the same as behaviour-driven development or acceptance-driven development. It differs uh, in the sense that it's uh, in the level of granularity. It focuses on the atomic unit of your system. So, um, for example, in object-orientated systems, it's going to be an object. Um, but also, it's not something, if you've ever tried it, it's not something that's easy to do. Um, actually, it's very difficult when you're first coming to do test-driven development. Um, but uh, if anybody's heard of Robert C. Martin, uh, Uncle Bob, uh, he formulated um, test-driven development into in sort of three principles. And he said, um, the first is that you never write any production code without writing a test first. Uh, the second was that you, um, you write just enough of your test for it to fail. And a compilation failure is also a failure. It counts. And uh, thirdly, you only write enough of your production code for that test to pass. So how does that help us writing tests? Well, first of all, our code is driven from the IDE. We write the test in a unit test. but we use our IDE to generate the code. So where we get compilation errors, like for example, um, you know, we, create a, we, we, we reference a class. The class doesn't exist. But we use the IDE, the um, little red marks that you get in the margins to, to build the code. Secondly, if you write a lot of code without writing uh, any tests for it, you delete it. It's, uh, as a developer, it's incredibly painful. You find yourself in the flow. Um, after two hours of writing code, you then have to select all of it and delete it. It's, um, it's cleansing. Um, and uh, it's worth doing. Um, so why do we do it? Why do we do, why do, we do test from development? Well, first of all, large code large codes bases are expensive. Uh, it's the functionality. That is the asset, not the code itself. Test-driven development, you are writing the tests along the critical path of your application. You're not going to get a lot of extraneous tests that perhaps don't really test classes that you don't need or parts of the code that you don't need. Secondly, the code is often simpler because you have a shorter, um, smaller um, feedback loops. You're writing very small pieces of code uh, just to pass those tests. Uh, 
and also you um, find that it, it, it promotes working code. It promotes code because your code um, is only ever a, a few minutes away from when you uh, from a, from a passing test. Um, also, you write code that is um, is much cleaner as well, because when you write the code, um, it fails. You write enough, just enough for it to pass, and then you refactor it. Um, but also, the other thing that it does is that um, you're, you're you're thinking in code. Uh, and it tests your assumptions about what you believe the problem to be and also what you believe the, the solution is. Um, and this is highlighted to me by, um, there's, a, there's an example, really, a simple arithmetic example, which is the baton ball one. I don't know whether you've heard of it before, but it's where a baton uh, ball uh, costs £1.10. And the, the bat costs a pound more than the ball. So the question is, is how much does a ball cost? Well, the answer is five pence. Uh, now, when this was example was used by a behavioral economist called uh, Daniel Kahneman, what he wanted to, he put it to a number of um, undergraduates at Harvard, at Princeton, and uh, at MIT. And what he found was, is a lot of people just said it was 10 pence or 10 cents. Yeah, in the uh, American coinage. And what he found is that a lot of people were made shortcuts, that they didn't um, think the problem through. They just made assumptions about what the answer was. And the thing about test-driven development is that by actually having to think about what our, the requirements are for, each of, for the parts of the... Um, code that we're writing, we can test whether, in fact, we've understood it properly. Uh, and for that reason, um, I think it's a very good way of writing code. And it's something that um, I find uh, gives me better confidence in, the, uh, in, in being able to refactor and making changes to the code that I've written. Um, all I can say is that if you haven't done it before, give it a try and uh